Today I wanted to talk about fiscal policy, the outlook for JobKeeper, JobSeeker and the general environment in which this will be set out in the, for the Australian economy. As we discussed last week, the Westpac Consumer Sentiment Index fell by 6% uh, in July, uh, including a 10% fall in Victoria. And that's really the first bit of data we've seen that captures the shutdown in Victoria. If you recall, we announced in early May the consumer sentiment had lifted by 16%. And that was really the first bit of data that was giving us some encouragement that the worst for the economy was probably behind us. And then last week, we also saw a 4% lift in hours worked for June. And the hours worked number is by far the most significant when we're analysing the labour market, given how much movement there is in and out of the labour force at the moment. And that was a larger number than I certainly was expecting. So we've seen evidence of a promising recovery, but of course the sentiment index coinciding with the closure in Victoria must be a worry. And that'll be setting the scene for the government's decisions that we'll see announced on Thursday. It's quite extraordinary that in the June quarter, the government injected $65 billion into the economy, including $20 billion from JobKeeper and $20 billion from the early drawdown of superannuation. And then in the September quarter, that number jumped to $95 billion, including $50 billion from JobKeeper. Now we're expecting that the announcements that we see on Thursday will continue to cover around 1.3 million workers. Bear in mind that at the moment, 3.4 million workers are receiving JobKeeper. And within that, 315,000 are in the hospitality industry and 125,000 are in recreation. The other big test on who's going to receive JobKeeper will be if a company can continue to demonstrate that its revenue, its turnover is down by that 30 to 50%. And we saw a recent report from the Bureau of Statistics that 52% of hospitality companies are still showing a 50% reduction in their turnover in June. 46% of recreation companies are in that category, as you would expect. But there's also 19% of retail companies and 15% of construction companies. So how that money is distributed across these companies, which will be a mixture of those that are directly affected by ongoing social distancing and by foreign travel, and those that can demonstrate a substantial ongoing reduction in turnover will be the challenge. We're expecting that around 1.3 million of the 3.4 million workers will continue to get that support. We're also expecting that JobSeeker which was lifted from around $600 to $1,150 with the job, with the job seeker supplement, will be scaled back to around $850. That'll make uh, the payment uh, competitive for workers uh, to, uh, to for them to re to have an incentive to go out and work, but it'll it'll be a substantial lift on the old New Start payments. So with that development we're expecting that the budget deficit, which will be announced for 2021 on Thursday, will be 240 billion, including those additional extensions to JobKeeper and JobSeeker. Now, one of the factors that's very important is that even though we'll be seeing the contribution to the economy going from 95 billion in the September quarter to 16 billion in the December quarter, it is true that much of that a significant part of the 95 billion and the 65 billion has been saved. So we've seen a 15% jump according to APRA data in business deposits and an 8% jump in household deposits. So that will provide some buffer for the fact that the government won't be able to continue to inject the sort of money into the economy that we saw in the December quarter. But of course, the outlook for the economy will be heavily dependent upon the rate at which the economy reopens. All that means that we're expecting a budget deficit to be announced for 2021 of around 240 billion, which will include 35 billion for the extension of JobKeeper and JobSeeker, and another 15 billion 
uh, for money that will be uh, set aside for the budget that will be announced in October. They may well also announce the budget forecast for 2021-2022 and we would expect that that number will still be very large, up to 150 billion, including about 60 billion of government spending and 90 billion associated with the cyclical deficit. The general principle of policy going forward is that monetary policy has pretty much run its race. If policy is required to reboot the economy going forward, the traditional force of cutting interest rates, boosting housing won't be available to us. And that'll put much more emphasis on fiscal policy. The good thing is that this low interest rate story that's pretty much neutralised monetary policy is going to provide the government with scope to boost budget deficits. If you can fund your 10 year bonds at 1% in an economy that's growing at 2.5%, then you can afford to be aggressive on fiscal policy. And we would applaud any movement by the government to do that. If we combine the two expected deficits of 240 billion and 150 billion, 390 billion, that would lead to about a 43% net net debt to GDP ratio, which is up from 19% certainly, but still makes Australia incredibly competitive with the rest of the world. Thank you.